Hey guys, um, this is Dylan Vanderveer, the host of Glizzy at the Turn uh, Hot Dog Review Golf. All right, is it going? Yeah, we're going. Is we're that live. thing working? San Jose Country Club got all the boys. All the boys. One bite, everyone knows the rules. Bun has a nice cut in it. There's a little bit of crunch on the dog, but overall it's soft. I like the bun. This is a good dog. This is an 8.1. You're, you're not that guy, pal. Yeah, you're not that guy. You're not that guy. Just finished a lesson with uh, the absolute legend, Adam Porzak. He got me feeling good about my game going into school. Uh, this is a what's in the bag slash golf tips help you get better at golf if I can. Um, and yeah, let's go. First of all, I have my putter with the Saguaro Am head cover. It's the only head cover that uh, I had in my house that fit a blade. I have no sentimental value to that tournament. But I just went to the Betonardi arm lock blade. Blade mallet. I've been a mallet guy. I had like the spider and a bunch of Scotty Cameron mallets, like to the X5 and whatnot. But I don't know. I just like this. It makes me do what I have to do in my putting stroke without thinking about it. So it's it's pretty good. It might be banned soon though. Um, and then we'll go to my wedges. I got all the Vokies. Um, they're all silver except for my pitching wedge and they're all one degree uh, weak. So it's 47, 53, 57, 60. Um, that's just because the gapping was weird with uh, the standard lofts. I'd hit like, I just, my, they would go too far, honestly. So now they're a little normal. So I've got a 60 degree and um, a lot of times the best wedge players in the world can control their trajectory the best. So they can bounce it into a back pin or like land it, land it super soft and spin it back to a front pin. So when I'm thinking about controlling trajectory, I'm thinking about controlling how hard I'm swinging because the, the slower you swing, the less high it will go and, how, and like how full of a finish I am. So if I want to hit it low, I'm also not, I'm going to try to hit a draw if I'm hitting it, if I want to hit it low. So if I want to hit like a low 60 yard shot or something, The mat and the and the range ball doesn't help, but that was pretty low. Uh, I'll try to hit like a low finish with a like a draw trajectory, and then if you want to hit it high, you just put it up a little bit, have a little faster hands, and it'll go to the moon. I'm 6'4", 190. so sixty degrees like one one oh eight, fifty six, one twenty five. Uh, 53s, 130, 134. Pitching wedge is 158. Uh, nines like 168. And then it's kind of eight irons, 180. Seven irons like 95. Uh, six irons like 212. Five irons, 225. Fours, 235, 238. Uh, my five wood's about 260. Three wood's about 280 in the air. And then my driver's typically around 300 unless I'm missing it. Um, but I have to work on like controlling the yardage because I know that I have the distance to like go full bore and then I'll kind of get stuck, especially with driver. I'll want to swing as hard as I can every time. Uh, so it's kind of like controlling tempo is something that I work on a lot and not trying to hit it as far as I can with every shot every time. That's something Adam's been really good at with me trying to get me to more like control the yardage rather than go full out every time. Um, so for my irons, I actually have a brand new set waiting for me at school of the exact same ones. They're the T100s from Titleist. Um, and I have dynamic gold X100 shafts. They're just, they're the best shafts. And then my, my grips are Golf Pride standard size with four wraps. So they're actually mid-size, but I like to get standard and have them wrap it just so they, I don't know. I just like it though. I will not have mid-size grips. 
Um, and this is my seven iron. I try to hit a little cut like Adam would have me do. So, uh, like we were talking about with Adam, if you want to hit a cut, it's really, you, you just want to make golf as easy as you can. So set up and then you can just turn the face open a little bit and re-grip it and then swing down your feet line. It'll get it started, started online and it will get it cutting because with the open face it's set up, it's not going to be as easy for you to pull it and hit it way left with the cut. So that's what I try to feel when I hit a cut and I do a lot of the hard work in the setup. So I don't have to manipulate all the, all the super small stuff in the swing. I try to get all my work done in the setup and then all I have to do is literally just, just swing the club. How about one that goes in? Actually went in. Um, one of my cooler clubs is the U500 driving iron. It's a four iron and it goes really far. It's kind of like on my college team, I think every single person has a, a U500 except for one kid. And we call it the cheater club because um, it goes really high if you want it to. And then you can also hit like super hot low ones. I was gonna say, this is like a super important club for me at, when I walk up to a nervous tee shot because I could hit it super low and have it roll for 40 yards and it gets out there like pretty decent, 260 if it's firm and stuff. So it's really nice to have. So if I am pulling up to a like a tee shot that you could get nervous, I've, I'll try to, um, I'll go to, I'll go to this club a lot of the time unless it's like outrageously long. Um, so when I go to this club, I want to pick the smallest target that I possibly can out in the fairway. So, and then I'll usually try to hit a little, a little draw, a low draw with this club off of the tee, just because when the ball's teed up, you're, you're gonna be a little shallower going into it anyways. So, I'll try to um, choke down a little bit, get a little closer, and then I just don't really swing as hard as I could. Just try to get it out there with a little draw. That was the little straight one, but that wouldn't get you in trouble. So I have five wood, three wood driver. This is the TS3 five wood. Um, it's 18 degrees. I think it's set to 19 to give me a little less less distance. I love this club with all of my heart. This is like my security blanket. Um, it really lets me go into the longer par fives that a lot of other college players, a lot of them have three irons, which are easier off the tee to get in play. They have more distance, but then when you're 260 on a like a uphill par five with bunkers all around the green and you got to make it stop super super quick the five woods just such an advantage to have so i'll never i'll never get rid of it um i can make this ball go any direction really easily but the high fade is my favorite personally Cause that thing lands like a butterfly with sore feet. The high fade is just so good with this club. So good with this club. Um, three wood, this is my three wood. It's really classic looking. It's the 915 F. Now you may ask me, you may say, you may say, Dylan, why do you still have a three wood from 2015 or 14 even? And the answer would be because this is the best three wood ever made in my opinion. 
Um, I have the new one laying in my garage and this is just better because I think it has something to do with this. I don't know the aerodynamics between that and this thing makes it look like it's going a million miles an hour when it's standing still. And this little slot, I think, it just comes off hot. What shaft you got in here? I have the hazardous smoke. I have this in, in all my woods. Um, but I hit this past a lot of my teammates' drivers a lot and, they, and then they, it's like the corked bat in baseball. Um, so they, they, they say, Dylan, is that club legal? And I say, yeah, it's legal, but it's hot. It's really, really hot. Um, so I love that club. And then I have my driver, the Sim 2, set to standard loft, 10 and a half. It's got the little plus. I don't know what that means, but it's, it looks cool. Um, hazardous smoke shaft, six and a half. Um, so that's extra stiff, 70 grams, and it's tipped, so it's even stiffer. It's kind of like swinging a redwood tree, but I love it. And when I'm hitting it good, it's really, really, it's a good weapon. When I'm hitting it bad, I hate it though. A driver tip. I would say one of the things that I do, I'll swing full at a driver like maybe two or three times around out of 14 par fours and fives. 14 driver, or I mean, yeah. Typically I'm teeing the ball lower and trying to get it in play. Um, you can lose a lot of strokes um, off the tee. And the difference between having 130 yards in and 140 yards in is literally like 0.4, or 0 0.04 of a stroke, sorry. Um, so if you swing as hard as you can every time, you're gonna be hitting it more offline and you're not gonna be, it's not, it's, the risk is not worth the reward. So a lot of times, like probably at least half the time I'm teeing it down, basically a ball at a ball height. So you can see that that's not over my driver. Um, and when I'm like this, I just, I'll choke down a touch and I'm just trying to hit a little, like a little low power cut that has no spin. It's not gonna carry very far, but it's gonna land and roll and get me in play 98% of the time, 99. So, just choke down, good setup, and then just have good tempo and let your athleticism live. I would not say I hit that great. It probably was a six yard push and then just went, went straight. It's gonna find the fairway. I'm gonna be in play. I'm gonna have a chance to do something with my wedge or putter. Um, so I think that that's something that could really help a lot of people is not just because you have driver in your hand, don't swing 100%. Just that, that shot's still gonna go farther than my five wood or three wood and it might be straighter because I don't have to swing as hard to get the same distance. So. That's something that I've worked on a lot in the last couple of years of growing as a college player. There we go. Good work, coach. I have a feeling like uh, this hat's from the Plantation Club. It's in it's in Palm Springs. Um, got some good memories there. So the first thing that's in my bag, it's a baby Buddha. It reminds me to be, it reminds me to chill out. Um, then I've got, let's go in this pocket. I've got the Porzak start line putting gate thing. This thing, I use it in every warm up session, every practice session. It's ridiculously good. Then I have the only thing better than that which is the straight putt no matter what ruler. This is really good for breaking putts. So you can pick the spot like that's hole high of where you want to start it, line it up, and then not think about the break. Just think about hitting your starting line. Um, sunflower seeds. Mouth gets really bored out there when you're sitting there doing nothing. Oh, chili lime. This is actually the most underrated flavor if you didn't know. So Gabe, 
Have you ever tried them? I've never tried Can't knock it until you try it, Gabe. Yeah. Come on. Trails mix. It's a staple in the golf world. Now this is something special to me. The St. Mary's yardage book. We got the stallion. I like to call him American Pharaoh. I think that's the coolest horse name ever. I like it. But he's not American, he's Gaelic. Um, it's got some, it's got my decade um, thing. It's got, you got this, a note from coach. Better every day, Gales, and then there's some stuff under here that I can't show you. Because that's a secret for the team only. I got brand new gloves. Always have to have fresh players' gloves. Um, and then I've got car keys, AirPods, Sharpie. Is that a family member right there? Or is that yeah, that's. Brother? That's my little brother. That's cool. And then I've got a leave. That's a staple in my bag. And I got my ball sack, which has things like my wallet and my golf tees and my golf balls. And it gets dirty in there. Like, I'll leave a half-eaten Snickers in there, and then I'll be in my car. Nope. So I go through about three or four ball sacks a month. Go through about three or four ball sacks a month. That's a fun fact, actually, about me. I'm going to chop that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys for checking out what's in my bag, coming out to uh, the Porzak Golf Academy with me. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Dylan Vanderveer. Uh, that's all my socials. And... Um, if you have any more questions or comments for me or Adam or Pity or Gabe, uh, be sure to leave a comment and drop a like on the video. And it means a lot. Great meeting you guys. We'll see you next time.